us, we have learned with sadness and dismay the death of the late Ibrahim Abdikahin occurred yesterday morning, great trader of the place. He was known for its commercial activities in Djibouti and in the regions, as well as for its social and religious works. He leaves behind him a widow, 12 children and 26 grandchildren. Great activist for the independence of the country, Ibrahim Abdi Kahin, has so much done and worked for the promotion and development of Djibouti since a long time. His major achievements have been marked by the financing and construction of the mosques and Quranic schools in Djibouti and in the whole of the region. Pierce Honest Integrated, the late Ibrahim Abdi Kahin was also known for his rightness and his frank talk by all Djiboutians. He was born in Djibouti in 1930 and was better known by the nickname of Ibrahim Der. Following the announcement of his death, the President of the Republic, Smail Mergele, addressed its most heartfelt, sincere condolences to the widow and children as well as to the relatives of the deceased and prayed to Allah to have mercy on his soul and to welcome him in his eternal paradise. A similar message of condolences from the Minister of Labor in charge of administrative reform Abdi Hussein Ahmed has been sent where he also presents its condolences on his own behalf and on behalf of the staff of his department to the family and friends of the deceased. In Adelaide, a news in release now on the summit in Malta. The head of state and government summits between the countries of Africa and on the European Union of Migration has been held on 11 and 12 November 2015 in Valletta, Malta. The Republic of Djibouti was represented at the summit by a delegation led by the Interior Minister Hassan Omar Mohammed. This summit was a first of its kind between Africa and European Union focus exclusively on an issues as sensitive as is the majority flow. This summit has for objective to deal with the growing phenomena on migration which has been become fundamental issues in the framework of a dialogue between Africa and uh, Europe. Uh, during this summit, uh, the head of state, African state, uh, have uh, adopted a political delegation of a plan of action which is uh, structured around five priority areas, namely the advantage of uh, migration in terms of uh, development and fight of roads causes of irregular migration and phenomena of internally uh, displaced persons migration and uh, mobility, the creation of uh, protection and asylums, the prevention of a fight against irregular migration, uh, traveling and migration tracking of uh, human beings. During a speech uh, delivered in uh, this uh, summit, uh, the Minister of Interior, Hassan Omar Mohammed, recalled that the Republic of Djibouti is not uh, expert by the phenomena of uh, migration uh, which never sees the take on the scale. He stressed uh, the role on the Republic of Djibouti which has always welcomed the migrants and has urged the European partners to deal with the road causes. Finally, the European Union officially made the procedures of fine trust an emergency for an amount of uh, 1.8 billion. The launch of uh, this fund will be an intended of uh, corporation progress already exciting migration between the countries of Africa and the European Union. The European Union is launching a 1.8 billion euros fund to tackle migration from Africa, yet the bloc struggled to impress recipients countries who say too much of the summit focus on sending Africans back home. Let's listen to Mohamed Aden. Desperately seeking solutions to Europe's migrant crisis, European Union leaders have unveiled an emergency trust fund for Africa. It's part of a bid to combat poverty and conflict fueling the flaying of people. The European Union Commission will inject 1.8 billion euro into the fund unveiled at a summit with African leaders in Valletta, Malta. European Union officials letters held an informal meeting on the island and criticism of refugees relocationists in Europe followed. I am not at all satisfied with the pace of relocationists 
that we have seen. To this day, 130 people have been relocated, while our intention is to relocate 116,000, said Jean-Claude Juncker, European Commission President. If we continue at this pace, we won't relocate this number until 1 January 2101. Therefore, it's necessary for us to adopt a more ambitious pace. Turkey is said to have dominated talks at the informal meeting in Malta. European leaders are keen to strike a deal to slow the flow of migrants from the country, grants possibly 3 billion euro worth and other incentives are offered to Ankara. In return, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said Turkey could be ready to speed up the implementation of the readmission agreement for national from third country. The readmission agreement for Turkish citizens is already in place, but they could speed up readmission for national from third countries. Speaking from Valletta, Euronews correspondent James Frane said, so the European Union's scourging of President Erdogan continues. Officials on the sidelines here are talking about a possibly European Union summit later this month with the Turkish leaders. Health news now. The Minister of Health, Dr. Qasim Sarkusman, has inaugurated yesterday morning the health post of Bayade of Alisabeh region in the sector of Holhol. Upon his arrival, he has been greeted by the Prefect of Region, Mr. Mohammed Wabiri Asove, the notables as well as the population of Bayade. This health post has been built with the support and funds of development partners in the USAID through the uh, US Army. It is a post with a specialized health team and equipped with the solar panels. The Department of Health has also accompanied them in the installations of equipment for care and human resources, as well as the supply of uh, water in the health post. In his speech, uh, Mr. Hussein El Tire, uh, the head of a village, was warmly thanked the government for the effort of improving the health of the population, and uh, he thanked the USAID through the U.S. Army, who has uh, contributed to the founding of uh, this post. As for the representative of uh, USAID, the, Mr. Gabriel has emphasized that this help us witness the strengthening of the multidimensional cooperation between the Republic of Djibouti and the United States of America. The government and American people are fully available, he said, to help the government and people of Djibouti in all the areas and the particular in the improvement of population health living in remote areas. After the inauguration, the, the minister has then visited the prefect of the region and delegation the various units of the health center, such as uh, consultation rooms, uh, a woman, the delivery room, the UN of uh, support for children, among others. In his intervention, the Minister of Health, Dr. Qasim Isaac has warmly thanked the population for this warm welcome, and he did not miss to convey the greetings of the Head of State, His Excellency Smal Mergele, to the population of Bayadi locality. He has emphasized the important role that this health post will play in the locality in terms of care and medical follow-up. The minister has thus urged the population to preserve this achievement, which he said will allow them to benefit from remote health care, in particular for the improvement of women and children's health. Still on national news, uh, the visit of health minister to visit in Ali Sabir, the Minister of Health, Dr. Qasim Saq Usman, along with the Prefect of the region, Mohammed Wabiri Asubi, has also visited the site that will house 
very soon the Fiji Regional Hospital of Ali Sabir. The purpose of his visit was to view the ongoing works of the hospital. The minister has visited the new premises of the brand new Regional Hospital of Ali Sabir, whose uh, construction has been recently complete. Today, the structure of hospital is uh, finally ready. If uh, the construction is complete, the few installation of medical equipment remains to be done. Let's recall that in addition of the general medicine, uh, this hospital will offer other uh, specialized services such as uh, surgery, uh, gynecology, obstetric, and uh, neonatology. It will process also the uh, department as well as eight boxes of uh, reaminations. A training workshop for Arabic language teachers of the public and the private sector has been closed yesterday in the premises of the Center for Training of Basic Education Teachers. This training has been conducted by Saudi experts of the Commission Al Dawa for Africa in collaboration with the Ministry of Islamic Affairs and Education. Saudi Arabia has allowed to 120 teachers spurs of benefit during a week of education inputs. This training focused on the thematic of general pedagogy as well as the methods of teaching of the Arabic language and intervenes in the framework of the cooperation between the ministries of education in Saudi Arabia country. In addition to the responsible of Menfa, the responsible of Arabic Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the responsible of Saudi Arabia MPC Affairs, as well as the experts in charge for the training have taken part in the ceremony. At the end, certificates have been handed over to the participants. The Ministry of National Education and Vocational Training has conducted this week in the five regions of the country an operation of selecting candidates for the road driving training which will soon be launched for the young people of those regions. A delegation composed of the technical advisors and officials are Randwe of the southern region of Dikhil, Al Sabih and Arta, but also in the north region of the and Oboch for a mission of uh, selecting the folders uh, for uh, nomination for this uh, training in order to them to obtain the driving license B. It is organized uh, for unemployment youth of the region uh, during uh, their tour. They have uh, discussed uh, with the official responsible for each region of the selection of 100 candidates in each region. The different personality who have uh, all taken part in this operation of uh, selection have commended the effort of the Ministry of Education and uh, did not fail to thank uh, the Ministry of National Education and Vocational Training, Dr. Dama El Marukie, for his uh, initiative in the field of training the young school uh, dropouts. The later uh, these later have also indicated that these accords meet the expectation of young people in terms of uh, unemployability and were perfectly adept to the context of economic development of the region. The Association of Djibouti Belgium, known as ABED, along with the Djibouti Youth Movement, has begun yesterday a joint action in the city of Oboko in proceeding to the distribution of school kits. With the collaboration of President of the Regional Council of Obok, Mr. Ali Mohammed Saeed, GDM and Abed have been able to help hundreds of orphans of Fantahiro. Moreover, we present at this day of distribution the President of the Regional Council of Obok, the representatives of the GDM, Umar Mohammed Hamid and Ahmed Ali Abdi Farah and Suleiman, the representative of Abed Ahmed Mohammed Dini and Daqa Hassan. This uh, distribution took place in an atmosphere of sharing that fits into the broad program of the civic engagement of diaspora Abed and the GDM. The Association for Development of Oboch Women has launched a training workshop for young girls on uh, sewing uh, as part of the support project in uh, sewing equipment to benefit 
Women uh, Seamstress uh, initiated by uh, Prodermo, which has uh, took place this uh, Thursday in Abakh. The Prefect of uh, Abakh Region, Mr. Hassan Dabale, the President of the Regional Council, Mr. Ali Hamad Hassan, and uh, Fatuma Hamad Yassin, Secretary General of Women Association of Abakh, were present at this uh, ceremony. The training will last two weeks uh, uh, and will allow young women who have uh, led school for having a good knowledge in profession and uh, saving. This association has realized three projects during their year concerning uh, rehabilitation of the center, support for craftswomen in Oboch, as well as initiations of development in the computer. The goal is to work for the improvement of living condition of Abakh women through the development of income generating activities promoting the status of women, the fight against female genital mutilations and all violence and discriminations at the place of women in Abakh. In cooperation with the Ministry of Muslims Affairs and Culture, the Association Mulhaddin Islamiyah of the Saudi Arabian Embassy in Djibouti organizes since a week and until next Thursday sessions of sermons and hadith for the benefit of Tajuru region inhabitants. These uh, sessions are part of a major tour in the regions of the interior by this Saudi association. Several religious demonstrations were held during this week in Tujara, where competitions on the religion as well as hadith took place. For this purpose, a great religious evening has been organized at the sport complex of Tujara in the presence of region prefect Abdul Malik Muhammad Bunita who has been welcomed by the representative of the Muslims Affairs Ministry Department, Abdul Karim Muhammad Hamid. This evening also saw the participation of religious leaders in customs persons, including Hamad Barqad Siraj, as well as various ulamas. For this occasion, the prefect of the region encourages that kind of initiative and calls for its renewal in the future. He also congratulated and thanked the Saudi and Arabian Embassy for the organization of this kind of event. The workshop to heighten awareness of fight against female genital mutilation continues. A workshop on this scene has been organized yesterday in Ohledaba. Uh, this workshop has seen the participation of President of the Kamen of Balbala, Yusuf Nuhu, the Supervisor Maria Makaku, as well as uh, the wise men and young people of uh, District Wahledaba. Fruitful discussions were held in the presence of uh, many officials and uh, President of Wahledaba District for this workshop. Uh, sketch in uh, traditional dances have been organized by the young people of uh, this district. The main objective of this workshop is to eradicate completely female genital mutilation and any other forms of uh, the Republic. This workshop uh, was a collaboration with the National Union of Djibouti uh, Women and UNICEF. Concerning the continuity of the National Youth Games competitions, in the evening of yesterday, the Hall of the Russian Judo has housed the judo competition, counting for the second phase commonly called phase of intersection. The young people from the different neighborhoods have competed for the final phase. Let's not forget that this is expected that each municipality and region is represented respectively by the two best teams of girls and boys. This discipline has been little practice until the beginning of the National Youth Games, which have greatly served for the promotion of this discipline. It is in the framework that has been organized training sessions for the benefit of the regions as well as the granting of sports materials. Note that these actions are part of the Secretary of State for Youth and Sports Policy, Badul Hassan Badul, who in accordance with the roadmap of the Head of State His Excellency, Smail Umar referred to the promotion and popularization of the sport in general and the discipline's little practice nowadays. 
The tour of a camp for Djiboutian Federation has been initiated in the region of Al Sabir. They have made a demonstration on the mountain of Are between the club of Djibouti and the club of Al Sabir. This has brought together more than <coughs> 120 young people in total, including those from the capital. It has been organized by the Professor Muhammad Ali Umar Ilyas uh, Black Belt 7 Degrees national expert of Kanfu and also by the vice president Mahdi Usman Abdo Nasir Awale Sheikh and the general secretary Radwan Hussein Wais. This tour which began in Ali Sabih in the day of 29 October will continue in the other regions in the region of Arta on November 12, the region of Tajora on November 19, Dikhil on 11 and finally the region of Abu 27, the Djiboutian Federation of Kanfu has also invited Addis Ababa in Federation uh, instructor will uh, present with the Djiboutian Federation Kanfu in uh, 17 to December 24 for the international entrepreneurship. In the continental level, economic experts from across the African continent say this may be an exciting year for African economies which could be ready to move out of their traditional roles and into new sectors. Let's see with more details. To go beyond their role as providers of raw materials like oil, gas, mineral, and agricultural product. Their efforts have had mixed success. While nations like South Africa, Kenya have managed to diversify their economy, others like Angola and Nigeria are largely known to investors as energy resources. But then oil price fell and fell and continued to fall. And while that trend is clearly alarming to those energy producers. Economists say that this might represent an opportunity for resource-poor African nations which have struggled to be heard in the resource-packed African market. Many experts gathered in this month in Johannesburg, still the continent economy hub, home to Africa's strongest banking sector and the headquarters of many international mining giants to discuss this new trend. The analyst Martin Davis said change is afoot. The African continent has predominantly been the commodity-driven economy where growth is allied to commodity prices. We now see the heavy wind of rapidly declining oil prices. What future does hold out for continent growth? What implication does that have for business? And I think arguably is Africa then rebalancing away from traditional commodity driven growth to one that is more balanced, more consumer driven and new wealth, new value being created beyond the simplistic business model of non beneficiated raw material, asked Davis. That moves away from the simple export of raw material, say analyst Garrett Newham, could also prompt wider improvement in governance and in society. After all, diversified economy spread wealth in more ways than one and also add much needed jobs to the economy. Newham is the head of the governance, crime and justice division at the Pretoria-based Institute of Security Studies. Davis predicts a geographic move as well as from the traditional West African powerhouse to the East African competitors. So I think we're going to start to see the interest of business, the interest of capital moves away from what has traditionally been the oil prepared economies in West Africa. Think Nigeria, think Angola, among others, to more sort of East Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania. Yes, Tanzania is going to be a natural gas history going forward as well, and also Mozambique. So I think the center of interest will shift from the West Africa increasingly to East. Gas prices are expected to stay low for much of the year and will be closely watched by investors and consumers around the world. For many consumers, the low price presents a welcome opportunity to save money. But for African economies, low commodity prices might be a chance to grow a new direction. 
And now on the international scene, U.S. forces has carried out a drone strike in Syria against the Islamic State group a militant Jihadi Joan, a U.S. military source, said there was a high degree of a certainty he had been killed in Tuesday stake in Raqqa. Let's look. Let's take a look. It has targeted the men known as Jihadis John, who appeared in several beheading videos carrying out by the group calling itself Islamic State or ISIL. The Pentagon Press Secretary, Peter Cook, said the airstrike was carried out in the ISIL stronghold of Raqqa targeted Mohammed M. Wazi. It was not clear whether he died in the operation. The result of the strike were being assessed. M. Wazi appeared in a video showing the killing of a U.S. journalist, James Foley and Stephen Sotloff, American aid worker Abdurrahman Kassid and British aid worker David Hain and Alan Haney and Japanese journalist Kenji Goto. Mwazi was born in Kuwait and moved to Britain as a child. He was a member of a wealthy family living in West London before it is believed he became radicalized around 2009, 2009 when he graduated. He was then arrested when trying to enter Tanzania and interrogated by the MI15 by the MI5 in the Netherlands on his country. On his return journey, the following year, he was detained again and fingerprinted and prevented from going to Kuwait where he wanted to marry a local woman. Still on the international level in Syria, since the end of September, Russia has carried out daily strikes against targets in Syria that it considers to be terrorists. Here are the explanations. Since the end of September, Russia has carried out daily strikes against targets in Syria that it considers to be terroristes. Euro News correspondent Denis Loktie is embedded with the Russian Air Force in Latakia. Euro News got access onto the Russian air base in Latakia on Syria's Mediterranean coast. All the Russian military planes in Syria take off from here making more than 40 sorties each day. The official claim that in the past six weeks these planes have destroyed more than 2,500 objects of what they call terrorist infrastructure on Syrian soil, he reports. Russian warplanes in Syria act as air support for ground offensives by the Syrian army and foreign Shiite militia. The Russians say they are now also cooperating with elements of the Syrian opposition which provides some intelligence this according to Major General Igor Konachenkov, allowed Islamist militants in several key provinces to be pushed back in the last two days, breaking the two years blockade of the Quares air base by Islamic State. All our plane based in Maimin and taking part in the battles are equipped with the most modern targeting systems. This allows targeting terrorist infrastructure precisely from an altitude of over 5,000 meters, claims Konachenkov. Despite several setbacks in the last few days, Islamist militants retain their grasp over large parts of Syria and occasionally pass onto the offensive, while the forces loyal to President Assad are struggling to defend and expand their zone of control. According to the Russian military, the Islamists are now changing their tactics in reaction to the bombing campaign, better concealing their relocations, better and constantly modifying routes for arms and ammunition supply, which may indicate they are weakening. Russia command says these attacks aircraft will keep striking targets as long as necessary, but with no evident change on the ground. The efficacy of Russian involvement in the Syrian conflict remains questionable, concludes Denilokshi. That's it for tonight's news. Have a great evening.